So hello, hello. Just testing to see that everything is working as expected. Just give me a couple of seconds, guys. Yeah, so the connection is not so good, but uh, so maybe I will find you will you will see a bit of lag, um, just some technical difficulties here, but I think we should be okay to to start. Um. So guys, if if you're not uh, um, if you can see the stream, uh, even though we have some some issues with the internet connection, welcome to the very first live stream here in Solutions Abroad. Thanks for for watching my videos um, and thanks for tuning in for the stream. What we're gonna do today, I'm gonna try to go through um, building Power BI report. A, Power BI report from, uh, you know, from a raw data where the data is in its own flat format in Excel, and then we'll we'll go through this step by step um, process on how you go from that flat file into a Power BI report. So you can see the whole process um, on how I do it personally, um, following some of the best practices that um, that I use when I work um, and also some of the tips that i talk about in this channel as well so they will all be kind of um, you'll see how they are cohesively working together um, to create uh, a simple report so what i'll try to do as well during this stream uh, if you have any questions put it in the questions uh, on the chat i think on the on the, uh, on the left hand side and then i'll I'll pause um, uh, at some point to just check the chat and answer any questions you might have. Um, what else? So if you missed this live stream, don't worry, it will be recorded. Uh, so you can rewatch it again later if you need. Um, and the file that I'll be using, I'll leave a link down in the description box below so you are able to kind of follow along as well if you want to, that is. But I'll try to, to narrate on all of the all of the stuff that I'm going to be working on, right? So I guess let's get started then, if there are no questions. Oh, hey, Rosanne, thanks for watching. Uh, let's see, what time is it in the Philippines? So it's my cousin from the Philippines. It's like in midnight, you should go to bed. You should go to bed, Rosanne. But anyway, thanks for watching. Um, okay, right. So let me move on to the screen and narrate here. So what I'll do, I uh, will just move on to here. So I hope you can see my screen. Uh, I will show you now the report that we want to 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 um, to create. So what we have. So um, if you want to start, uh, I'm sure you already have, um, but if you want to follow along, you'll need to download and install Power BI Desktop. This is where we'll mainly do all of our, um, uh, all of our, uh, all the stuff that we are going to be talking about here in, in this live stream. The file that we'll be using is this employees file. Uh, let me just show it to you really quickly. So it's there is nothing special about this file really. Um, it's a file that was generated online. So I generated it online using a website called muckaroo.com, and all it is is uh, it's a HR it's a kind of HR type of data, right? So you have employee IDs, first name, last name, their start date and end date in the company. Um, their employment types, if they're full-time or part-time. We have the different regions where they belong, uh, what area, what function and business unit. So not a lot of data here at all. 
um, and I'll show you how you can get some insights on this. So understand, you know, how to see your headcount uh, starters or levers on a specific time uh, of a month or a year. And then I'll show you how to, 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 to create it all from scratch. So first we will start with, uh, let me just check if there are any questions. Okay, nothing. So, okay. So what you'll need to do first to load this data in Power BI, you'll need to first get data from CSV. We know it's a CSV. So we know it's this file. And we'll load this data as it is. Um, actually, let's snoop around a little bit and see if there's anything we can glean on this. Um, we're opening it in Power Query. So here is the data that we have on that Excel that we just saw. You can see that Power BI has already created a couple of steps for us. You can see it's done some cleaning up, promoted headers, and changed the type to make sure that it understands. So it, it, it uses the sample, like the first top 1,000 rows to, um, to guess what the column type is for each of these. So you can see it's like text, text, because of that um, is ABC here, but these are the different kind of column types available for you in Power Query. You can see it actually did something wrong here, right? Um, and it's not its fault because it only checks the first couple of um, top rows. So you see on the end date, this is supposed to be a date uh, column type, but uh, like the start date here, because it's already, already a date type. But here it's not, because the first couple of rows are empty. So we'll just change that into a date. Um, replacing means we don't add a new step. We just kind of modify the current step here. And that's, uh, and it's important to have it as a date, because you can't do kind of time intelligence functions if this column isn't a date, at least not easily. Um, Let's close and apply. So let's load this into our um, into our data set for now. So now we will have that you'll see in our model. So we have one table here, an import. All right. So what we'll do next, we'll try to create a, um, a calendar table. So we'll do that. So I have a video that covers it, but anyway, let's go through it together. So we'll we'll use DAX to create a calendar table. Let's make it a little bit bigger. We'll do um, we'll use add columns here, so we can kind of pick and choose what we want to to, to take, and then we'll use a handy one called calendar. Also, so and if you're wondering what I'm doing here, uh, let's see. So let me just show you what I'm doing here. Year. So what it does, um, this function, this this quick function. So we have a couple of things, right? Um, so we're generating a um, a calendar table based on our data set. Um, so from what I understand, Calendar Auto does the rest for you. Um, it, it, it generates the dates based on what you have in the data set so far. So from what I understand, um, when I'm reading through um, or watching Guy Naki videos, the calendar auto scans through all of the dates that you have in your data set. It takes the earliest date that you have and then the latest date, and that's the span of your uh, your calendar. So what this generates, you can see it, it starts from the first and the first 2020, and that's probably because one of these um, start date or end date columns that we have they start from there um, and it so that's that's why it doesn't go too far back and the add columns kind of it, this this just allows us to control how many or what type of columns we have here because we don't just want date right we want to be able to split this into different axes so at the moment we have the date and the year but also we want other things here so we want to put um, let's say 
month yeah and we'll put here uh, month name actually you know we will we'll need to do format here so we'll put date here and then the format should be yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so this um, returns us the name of the month and the only way to return the name of the month not the number is by doing this uh, do, do, putting it in a format so this make sure that it returns the full name of the month I think we'll also need individually the month number as well and I'll show you why we need this in a little bit um, at the moment we'll just put the month and then the date so you see it returns us what month number it is and lastly let's put day yeah and then day then date yeah perfect so that is how you generate a calendar table in DAX so that's pretty handy um, and this this calendar table is what we use um, for all of our kind of time intelligence functions uh, next let's see we should as best practice you should mark this as a date table So we know that we have to use uh, the calendar table. And also, um, just to kind of finish up this setup, let's also create a measure table, um, which would house all of our uh, measure calculations that we'll need to use um, in this video. So before I do that, I wanna just see if the stream is okay. Yeah, fantastic. So, okay, so we'll just load a, a table here. We'll name it calculations and it doesn't have anything. I'm not sure why there is no built-in way to do this, um, but from what I can see, this is how everybody uses it. Uh, but really this should be um, built-in in Power BI because the, I mean, there is no other way to do it otherwise. So to create a measure table, you create a, an empty table with no values um, we'll just create uh, a, a, some measure in here whichever so we'll do count of employees and then we'll do a count let's also make that bigger so you can see and then you'll see when i hide this column that we don't need there and then i do this you see it gets changed into a measure table you can see it's like a calculator um, and it's always pinned at the very top so you you can always find your your measures here so you can have everything here you don't have to house them in different tables that you have in your data set so now let's look at our model so it's very simple model um, we have the calendar and the employees table that we loaded uh, what we'll need to do, we'll need to create a couple of relationships so we can do some uh, some measurements, right? So let's make a relationship between the end date and the start date here. And let's make this relationship inactive. Um, and that's because we need to, 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 we need our calculation to be separate um, and we need to be we want to be able to define which relationship it should use when we're doing the calculations and i'll show you why that is in, in a second so let's hit okay for now so right um so from here you and actually like from here even before we do anything else you can actually start doing some uh you know some visualizations right so for example uh, you wanted to see for every year you wanted to see how many starters there have been let's see if that will actually not that that be yeah, because we didn't do that so maybe we'll need to create after all a um a measure for these uh, so 
I guess like the couple of things that are pretty important for for this kind of data, especially if you have start dates or end dates um, and employee information, typically what you would find on HR analytics, um, people are interested in, in things like headcount or starters or levers, you know, this kind of metrics. And um, and we're going to cover them. So I will, I will show you exactly how you can start creating your, your own measures. Um, and these, and the, the, I guess like the, the, the biggest factor about these measures are that they're dynamic, which means that you can see them historically, you can compare them against each other, um, and, and you can use it against different slices um, in your data. So for example, you can, um, with one headcount measure, um, because it's affected by context, you can split it into you know different departments or different business units. Really, really helpful, um, really powerful stuff. So, uh, so I guess let, let, let me show you how to, um, to do that. Um, check again the stream. Yeah, cool. Yeah, lots of warnings because my internet connection, I guess, is not that good. Right, so let's start creating some measures. So let's start by working on the starters. So it's, it's pretty easy, right? So we'll put starters here. And what we will do is we will use a calculate, um, which is what we'll use to, um, to, to, so that we're able to put expressions or filters, whatever we want on our, um, uh, on our calculations. So we'll do a count. So, well, actually, now we'll just reuse what I did. So the measure already, count of employees. So we want to just count the IDs in the employees. However, what we want to do is we want to activate the inactive relationships that we have set up. So if you remember, we, we deactivated all of them. And that is because we, we don't, or, or rather we want to be able to decide for which measures, um, uh, what, what relationship each measure is using. So in this case, um, we have two relationships um, and we want to use the relationship against the start date. So we'll do dates against the start date. And let's let's make it uh, a little bit readable. And like so. Yeah, if you're wondering, I'm using Alt Enter to to create new lines, and it's it's just a way for you to um to to organize your functions and and scripts on your uh, formula bar so it doesn't affect really affect uh, anything else so now that we have that so just a quick um a rundown on what this does so the function uh, so the the measure counts the employees but it counts the employees based on this use relationship so it, it does the count but it makes sure that it it counts based on the relationship between the date and the start date. So what this does is if you wanted to do a count of starters, now you should be able to, um, whereas before we, we aren't able to, right? So we, if you put a year and hopefully, well, actually let's put the year in the axis and the starters as our value. So now you'll see that you will get the starters um by year in a quite easily like this uh in, in this graph and just to verify that this is correct let's just put a different table here so start date and end date and because we are able to do um what we call like cross filtering in the report view it means that if I click any of these values on the left here, you should see the results or, or, or which, which employees these should be uh, on the right-hand side here on the table. So let's see, 2021. So you see here we have, um, uh, wait, wait. Let's see, maybe if I need to do like this. So I just had to put the starters, the um, 
to make sure that it's only always showing uh, the values that, that that is counted by by this uh, measure so you see here we have 12 starters in 2021 and that works because you can see here these people are all starting in 2021 at least this uh, last month if you didn't want to for example um, if you wanted to see by month uh, for example uh, what you can do you can add another axis here year and month and then let's expand it down you'll see the months are not uh, they are organized alphabetically so it's not really chronologically so what you can do with that if you go to month uh, ho hover over it and you need to sort by the month number so this is why we brought in the month number because the month number um, uh, is kind of like a, a number sorting for us right so it it tells us that january is one and then december is 12. So if you click that, you'll see that hopefully if we, yeah, it, you need to re-add it and then, because it's, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit weird. So if you expand now, you'll see that it starts from 27, uh, January 2017, all the way to 2021 of January and it's in chronological order. Uh, okay, so if, let's see if there are any questions. There are no questions, so hopefully everything makes sense so far. Uh, okay, so let's do the same thing for levers. So we want to get the number of levers in, uh, in our axis, right? So we will have to do the same thing that we did for starters. So let's see, uh, I just wanna make the formula bar a little bit bigger. Don't know why it's doing that, let's see. Okay, so we'll name this one levers and we'll do a calculate again. And then we will do a count. Yeah. And then again, we will do use relationship, then date. And this time we will use the end date, not the start date. And that's it. So now you have the levers uh, count. And what's great about this is, for example, be because they are kind of, they are in a measure and they sort of share the same, uh, they, they share the same calendar table, you can put them side by side. So for example, if I just add the levers here, you'll see that you get the data for the starters and the levers in the same axis and i think i already covered this in a previous video but you know nevertheless it's one of those issues that i typically find that um uh, trips up a lot of people is that they they don't create a calendar table and they have auto date time enabled so that means you can only count the start date or you can only count the end date on a kind of separate tables but with the shared calendar table you're able to kind of put them in the same axis like sort of like this you'll see here as well the only thing is that for example for those dates that have no levers you'll see that they have I mean, it's not even zero. So what you can do there um, is at the end, you can add a plus zero. This makes sure that if there is no, um, uh, for example, if, if there are no levers for that specific uh, axis or for, for that specific context, this measure will always return zero no matter what. And we just need to make sure we hide those that don't have a year so let's see basic all right so that only just shows you the uh, the dates that have values in them that's pretty easy all right no questions then okay that's all right then so now you have your starters and levers um, before I move on to the head count, 
I want to show you, like, it, it's insane how powerful these measures are, right? Um, because we've, we've, uh, let me just put it back. So we've, we've, we've put them in an axis. So it means like it understands, you know, date, time, context, but it doesn't stop there. So for example, you wanted to know, um, so now, because you have these starters in, in here, so it gives you the starters for the whole time. And then you can put it in uh, in its own. Uh, let's create our own line chart here, right? So for every year we want to see. And it doesn't stop there. So if I put it in a ribbon chart, which is, um, it, it just shows us the distribution. And for example, um, if we put a different slice here let's say we want to see by region you'll see how um, you know how your starters kind of evolve over time and probably region is not the the best case for us at the moment because it doesn't really show you um, much or only the fact that uh, you know we can see a lot of starters from the Philippines from the 20 from 2017 onwards right so what this ribbon chart shows you is, is, is kind of the distribution of your regions over time. Um, the the bigger of an impact it is, the higher it is on, on, on this graph. So if we, for example, show here instead of region, maybe function, let's see what it shows us. It shows us, actually that, that's too many slices. So let's see if there is anything else we can use. Maybe employment type. Okay, so you see this is interesting. So you see that it gives us, so full time, we have a lot of starters full time throughout throughout the time that we have in this data set. But you'll see that there is kind of differences between um, part-time employees and temp. So in 2017, there were more starters as part-time, but in 2018, it flipped, so temporary, um, we had more temporary starters in 2018, and that's what this graph uh, shows us. So you can see, and you know, we're able to get this. Um, we're we're able to 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 get this insight purely from just one measure. I mean, it's it's the, the you know the the power of this measure is is absolutely. Uh, it's so useful. Uh, anyway, uh, so now that you understand how, well, I hope. I've explained how measures work and kind of how powerful they are. Let's move on to the next calculation that I want to do, which is the headcount. So this one is actually quite common. And if we go back to the data view, um, we need to be careful about this headcount because the headcount, um, uh, so we need to do a little bit more mental gymnastics with the headcount, right? Because we need to make sure that for a specific time, we are checking if the start date, uh, um, if, if the start date is on or after a specific time of, of that date, um, or if they haven't been terminated, or if their termination date is in the future. So I guess there there are three different um, uh, uh, three different types of uh, filters that you need to make sure you you implement in order to do the headcount. So let's let's try to write it. Um, let's see if I if I can do it. So we'll do a headcount. Um, we'll do a calculate. So again, we can do a put an expression here, and then we will do the same count of employees. And here we will need to do a filter, and let's organize this a little bit. So, okay, well, actually, let's move the calculate below. And I, I, I like doing this just because it's a lot easier for me to see because um, I have a bit of programming background and, you know, like having all my 
code written in one single line i mean it, it, it's something that I, i'm sure some people can do it but i can't personally so let's do a filter let's filter the employees table and let's see if i can do um so let's start first if the employees is um so let's see if the if i have to yeah i have to yeah exactly so i do need to oh wait no 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 i don't have to do that so if the end date no if the start date is greater than or equal to max date so this is one of the filter expressions that we want so we want to make sure that for 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 the context we want to make sure that the the date that we have is wait is that correct if the start date is greater than or equal to yeah yeah so let, let, let's do this one for now so we're missing a couple of um uh scenarios here so we're just checking if the if the person is um if their start date is on or before or on or after a specific date we count them so kind of like the starter uh, but slightly different so let's see how this looks like in in here so let's put it on a year and let's put and actually we already have the page there no we don't i already removed it so we'll put first name start date and end date so we put 2021 we have 12 and perfect so we're only checking that their start date is on or after so which is perfect so it's exactly like the starters it, it that's how it functions right now now we need to put a a different operator here um, so we need to put an end we want to make sure that their end date is less than or equals to the date and let's just make this a little bit readable for you because it's starting to look a lot messy for me mm -hmm. So here we are. Cool. So what that second one does is it, so first this one makes sure that our, the start date is on or after a date. And this makes sure that we're counting those that have an end date. Um, if the date, or rather if their end date is on or before, but maybe we want to count them if they are, uh, if uh, if it's on the same date, yeah, so we'll do like that. So you see it's a little bit different now, this value. Let's see why. So you see because, yeah, so that's fine. Yeah, I think they all look all right so far. Let's see if there are any questions. Annualized attrition. Um, I, I will show you how you can create because um, attrition is to do with people leaving the, the company against your headcount, right? So I'll, I'll show you how you can use quick measures to do that. Um, and uh, like, I guess I can show you how to do the turnover, which kind of w it's sort of something similar right um and, and the beauty of what we're doing now is because we are already tackling the, the 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 main measures that you need for attrition or turnover you can just reuse these you know like and, and it's pretty easy to reuse so uh let me just see before i do anything else um why is it showing blank that worries me slightly anyway so let's continue so i know that we are missing uh, i feel like i am i have some i've done something wrong here so let's do 
the last one the last bit that i need here is to show you uh, to to add an or uh parameter so we want to make sure first of all that we check that the start date is on or after dates and then the end dates right so we check those two and we also need to make sure that they're um they're counted as a head count if they don't have a an end date so that means they are um you know if they they don't have an end date then they are part of the head count from their start date so we'll do a We'll put them in a open and close parenthesis. So this just makes sure that it groups these two together. And if they're true, then it counts. And then we'll do an or. So the or is like a double double pipe. And then we will do um, is blank and date. So yeah, so there we go. Let's see now. Um, hmm. So let's see what we can do with this measure by year. Hmm. We have done something wrong here. Let's see. If there are no questions, yeah. So let's let me just have a look at this quickly, and if not, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. Uh, let's see. So filter. We're counting the employees. Yes, filtering employees, and then we're checking the max date. Let's see if this will fix it so i'm just gonna switch it about uh, and i think that might have fixed it so let's see here if we can show the table again id oh no so let's i'm just gonna create a quick table just to verify um because I, I i know that you know measures are that they are quite powerful but at the same time you need to make sure that you you're, you're always validating that whatever you're doing is correct um you know you can't always just trust whatever it gives you um, especially if you're kind of freehanding the the calculations uh so i guess what we can try to do if we click here 2021 uh, it gives us 347 yeah as expected and everybody that has uh, yeah it's been here 2020 yeah perfect so you can see here so you see this person right so he counts he shows up as a head count in 2020 um because his start date is before 2020 and his end date is after 2020 so it's 2021 so it's it, i mean what we can try to do so I will I will try to actually no we can just click it and you see uh, well you can't really see from here but if I make it bigger so we're we're filtering it for this specific person so you see he counts he's a head count for 2018 because he started 2018 and 2019 2020 not 2021 so this is how you do head count now in um, you know using DAX. All right, so I think that sort of covers the main um, the main measures that I wanted to do today. Um, maybe what we can try to do is we can try to do the, the turnover, um, which is sort of related to to sort of the attrition. So from what I understand, turnover is it, it, it is like to understand how many levers do you get compared to your kind of headcount, right? So the calculation could be different depending on the company or depending the of the definition of this metric with your company but for the most part it's mainly just um headcount divided by lever at least from what i understand but i think there are different variations so easily enough <laughs> you can because you can reuse measures uh, in your calculations so we'll, we'll just do that so turnover percentage and from here we will just do 
head count because we already have the head count and then the levers easy easy as that however um yeah division like this is not really best practice um especially if you have for example if you have instances that have zero levers it's gonna really mess up your you know, your visuals so for example if i show you how it looks like right now let's just make it into a percentage let me put it in a year and month axis you can I'm not sure you can already see, you can already see there is it is just it just goes forever and that's because this number returns an infinity uh, if you divide it like this it's like an unsafe way to do it so the safest way to do division is using the di the divide just use divide man um, and now we you do the same thing so numerator denominator is the levers and our alternative result we just put zero. So you see now you have your turnover for um, for the whole year. Uh, I and I th I think I might have done it the opposite way around. I think it should be levers by headcount, right? Because those numbers look weird to me. Uh, so we'll we'll just swap it around. Yeah. So that looks. I think that looks much better. So let's let me see um, if the calculations are correct, right? So let's bring in the head count as a card. So your head count, and then you have your levers. Okay, I see why it's giving us that number. And then we actually want to bring the turnover as well. Let's just copy it, make it easier turnover so you see that's why it's giving us that weird value um, and that's because it's giving us all of this this levers count actually is I mean it's, it's not perfect I guess so we'll we'll need to just look for a specific year let's let's try to add a slicer here and let's say we wanted to just see let's make a list the turnover for a specific year okay so yeah this is much better so now you can see the head count for that year and the lever um, count for that year so that gives you your turnover and i guess so what it means is that the higher the turnover is the um uh you know the the the, the higher uh how, how do i say this my english is going today the bigger the turnover is, the, the more levers you have against your headcount, which is bad. So, um, and, and that's how you, you kind of measure that. So big is bad, easy. And yeah, so I think we'll work with these four, um, four measures, but obviously you can, you can do more. Uh, you can do more for this. So uh, I guess one example that I can, I can show you is to use quick measures. So quick measures are kind of pre-built calculations that Power BI provides you. So you can do you know, more calculations without having to write any code at all. So for example, we, have, um, we were working on headcount at the moment. So let's say you wanted to see, so we, we show the headcount here, but maybe you don't want to see the headcount per year. Maybe you want to see it as a running total, right? So you, you're adding up uh, the, the more headcount you have every year or which, however, whichever slicer you want it to be. So what you can do, you can do a quick measure, I think from here. And from here, you can select uh, different types of uh, quick measures that you can do uh, at the moment we do uh, well we, we can do the rolling uh, it should be here running total somewhere is it not here here to the rolling yeah here we are so running total and so yeah so we want if we want to do the running total for head count you just drag it in i think that's it and i think we can do by date 
and yeah so let's let's see what that gives us so you see it it auto creates a measure for us and it does um i mean it, it, it generates the dax for us you know uh, without us having to do much we just had to do those things and let's see how that looks like now on a visual so let's remove head count let's replace it that's weird that looks exactly like the head count Yeah, that is exactly like the headcount. I feel like I've done something weird here. Maybe I did something. I think it's probably because I put date instead of year. So let's let me just recreate that. And if if not, I will will just try to move on. Let's see, quick measure. Let's do again running total by using header headcount and then we'll do here this time let's see if that works huh that is weird okay maybe it's something to do with the um the measure itself yeah let's not spend too much time on that let me just check how long the stream has been oh it's been almost an hour so now let's move on then to um, to creating the dashboard. So now we, I think we have everything set up now for uh, to, to to create at least some some basic pages for our report. So let me just delete this one that we don't we're not gonna use today. And let's try to build a simple report, right? So let let me just clear up the different pages that we aren't going to use. Uh, delete, delete. Yeah, so let's work on the layout of the page, right? So what we will probably want to do is you will want to have a summary uh, page, which is kind of going to be your landing page. And here you, I guess you want to show some quick numbers like your, your head count, starters, levers, things like this. And we want to create different pages for the different, insights that you want to have so maybe we can create a page for headcount for lever starters and turnover so uh, let's start doing that um, so we can start creating some shapes and i use shapes it's just a way to kind of contain the um to 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 organize my buttons and uh, my cards but you don't have to do it like this you can follow how i do so we'll not do a fill uh, yeah we'll do a shadow so typically the layout that i follow when i build reports and let me just save this before i uh, before i lose it uh, typically, the layout that I do when it comes to creating reports, um, because, because you can do as you know, you can do many things in this in this in in, in your page, but you want to have some semblance of structure so that your all your pages kind of follow the same uh, way of interacting. So typically, I would have filters if I have drop down filters or, or or options on the left hand side. I would have the cards like if I have any kind of you know like quick numbers that you want to give it will be on the top and then any insights that you have bar bar charts graphs uh, tables will be in the middle so that's the kind of structure that i do and to do that i typically just create like different boxes to to make sure they're all organized in 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 in, in sort of uh, logical categories so let's just try to do that really really quickly and then let's do like this. Yeah. And let's see if there are any questions. No, no questions so far. Let's create a text box here. Uh, let's name it executive summary. It can be anything you want as well. 
this will just be the title of this uh, of this page. And then I guess we can try to put some cards next. So let's let's do that. Uh, let's put the head count first. Yeah. So we can do a head count here. Um, let's see. We can put the starters and levers as well. I'm just thinking if I should put some borders just so that I can... Ugh, okay, that's a bit ugly. I don't want to put a shadow because I want it to look like it's contained here. So maybe I will do just a background color. Just a light shade of gray. So let's do 80%. Okay, fantastic. I, I think that looks good. So we'll just make it slightly bigger. And then, and I, it's like, a, so what I do there, I just, I just put this like a, an indicator that these two are not related, even though they are grouped the same way without being too overpowering. But I mean, I guess that's just a, a personal taste at this point. So, so we'll do starters. And by the way, if you're wondering why it's showing a thousand there, it's because we haven't put any filters yet. So it's just giving us of all time, right? So we need to just, we'll, we'll organize it, no worry. And then we'll put the turnover right here. Right, so now we will do, uh, yeah, again, no other questions. Let's put the filters that we want. So I think from our data, we have some different types of slices that we can use, but let us put here, because I think we want to be looking at, I think year as its own. So we're gonna look at for each year. Wanna make this as a drop down. And actually, let's let's make sure that because I can see the blank. Let's just make sure we don't show the blanks. So basic, perfect. So I'm gonna lock this and I'm gonna hide it. Um, and that's when you publish it online, so you, they can't see. And actually, we can just hide the filters pane so they don't see it. That way, you don't see any blank values here. So for example, you can see your turnover for that year your headcount starters and levers so you can see you have turnovers not that bad actually i guess we will try to do the same thing here in the background maybe that will work and we will do maybe by business unit if that will make sense yeah And let's do by region as well. Why not? By region. So that lets you see, for example, um, uh, for the year 2021, for example, if you wanted to see, okay, how is the US uh, doing? So you can see their headcount separately. Um, and without you having to do any anything else, like it's, the calculations kind of like change depending on the kind of filter context applied to it, which is what we have here. Um, same thing here. Uh, let's see if there are no, no questions. And uh, yeah, so that's so that's how you do it uh, to create this first page that we have. Let's try to add some. Uh, let's, start, let's try to add some visualizations here. 
let's do maybe let's see if we can show the head count on a pie chart let's see if we can show it by headcount and let's see if we can show it by employment type and oh actually you know what what I typically do with this drop down filters I make sure that their selection controls you're able to just tick so you can select more than one if you need uh, it's just helpful you know because sometimes you don't want to just see one region. Maybe you want to see a combination of region. For example, uh, you can you want to see these two together. Sure, you can do that. Um, you don't want to uh, unless you have a specific reason why you want just a single select. And and actually, you know what's really funny? It it it, it looks like so. If you select here, it does it one by one. But this isn't like this. This you can multi-select, but it doesn't tell you. You can do control click, and you can select multiple values. So, but it's it's not very clear to a lot of people. So I typically just make sure that they have they're able to um, to multi-select by just ticking. So that that I think that translates a lot easier to to some people. Uh, let's see. Let's let's actually let's let's just make these capitalize so they don't look uh, weird. Business unit and this one. So you can see that bulk of our of our employees, at least for 2021, is mostly they're mostly full-time employees. But let's do a bit of um, just housekeeping here. So title, um, let's do as well the legend. I don't want it there. Usually I do, we not, don't need that. Yeah, so that I think is good. And you know, we, what we can also try to change the detail label. Oh no, it's my Steam. Um, and let's say we wanted to see, oh, actually, maybe that's even better. Maybe if we just, we can hide the legends. So that, <laughs> that's cool. Okay, I didn't even know that. So I don't need to show the legend at all. So you can see the split by employment type there. Right, so the next one, maybe what we can try to do, and maybe let's, let's not do that. Let's. Again, let's put the sh not the shadow. Let's put some background there. Eighty. Again, it's just I'm just adding some natural borders without being too, um, without it being too solid. And let's see what else we can do. So maybe we can do head count by uh, by function. Oh, no, sorry, not there. So we'll do a function there. Uh, okay, maybe that's not a good idea. Because that's um, typically what I do. Um, for example, like with this, it's not a good way to represent in a pie chart. Uh, and that's because they, you can see they're all kind of almost the same in terms of size. So it's not really a good good split uh, there's too many categories so normally what I would do so maybe let's maybe let's show a different value here maybe let's see like we can show maybe uh, starters maybe Yeah, let's let's try. I mean, it doesn't have to be this, but it, it can be whatever you want. Um, the idea, well, I guess the, the the whole point of the first page is just to show, um, you know, some highlight information. So we'll just do it like this for now. Uh, let's change. Let's hide those titles on the labels because they are 
sometimes quite useless or redundant, especially if you have a title already. Starters by function. Um, actually, you know what's even better? If we do um, top starters by function, um, when you visualize a kind of data like this where it has too many, uh, typically, I would filter this uh, even smaller. So not show everything, but show some. So let's see if, if I still remember how to do it. So top five. Maybe that's not the one function. Yeah, probably it's only showing four because it's um, the rest, I'm guessing, is the same value. It's, yeah, exactly. So let's see what else. So, oh, and also with these, um, with these bar charts, I typically hide the not that one, but the y-axis. And what I do is instead, I show the data labels um, because from my experience, they've always been more, uh, it's a lot easier to see, right? Um, even though I know that you can see the numbers specifically when you hover over them, sometimes these are useful by themselves. And what we can try to do next is let's do A, what I want to do maybe here is a line chart for, yeah, axis needs to be, or rather I want it to be year and month. And I want to see everything. So head count, starters and levers. Yeah, and it's not showing us everybody because of this filter here. But what you can do, well, let's let's try to rename it first. Uh, historical trend. Yeah, so it's it's yeah, it's only filtering 2021 because of this. But what we can try to do is we can disable the filter. Um, so that it doesn't get affected by this filter. So I'll show you how to do that now. Go edit interactions. So if you click on year, um, you'll see it shows every, um, it, it shows these two buttons on all of these um, visuals that we have here. And it means that uh, if I do none, it means that no matter what you select here, this won't get affected at all. So yeah, just disable that now. So you see, even if I select different values, this historical uh, chart won't, um, uh, it won't get applied, it won't get affected at all. So regardless, so it will always show the numbers here. Uh, let's see, am I missing something? Where is my, oh, it's the same. I'm missing the levers, here we go. And yeah, there you go. So that's how you create, let's just put it to 2021. What else do I do? Has there been any questions so far? No, but people are watching, so that's good. That's good to see. Um, how many, yeah. Yeah, so it's been an hour, so I'll just try to wrap it up um, because now we've kind of created one page and the next pages are, are, are quite easy. Um, we just want to uh, create the first landing page to show just some quick quick metrics and then the other pages kind of follow the same suit, um, except obviously it, it, want, it we want them to be more focused on uh, specific HR metrics that we're looking for, right? So at the moment, it's just a mishmash here of headcount, starters, levers, turnover, but we want to 
you know dive deeper into these uh, numbers so uh, we can do to make our lives a lot easier let's just duplicate we'll do here um, head count we'll do analysis We'll do a headcount here. Then starters and then levers. And you know what? Let's let's also do or maybe I shouldn't maybe let's just do headcount first because that it will make our lives a lot easier if we just do one and then duplicate the rest because I I want to do the same slice for each one of them except uh, but change the um, the value. So let's do headcount analysis first. We want to do headcount by employment type. Yeah, we want to. So now we want to have everything by headcount. Sorry, here. And if you have any suggestions on what you want to see, I mean, I can change it. So no, no worries. Just let me know. Let's see if there has been any comments. No. Okay. Great. So we will do And the historical trend, maybe what I want to show here is actually the, not just, yeah, so head count, but we want to see more data in here, right? So we want to see how the employment type changes over time, maybe. So let's see. Let's make a ribbon. Perfect. So yeah, so as you remember, if I put it on focus mode, it shows us from 2017, <laughs> we had a lot of, um, we have more temp in 2018 compared to 2017 against all the other employment types. So that's interesting to see. Now, uh, I guess what we can try to do now, we can just do duplicates. And I'm going to try to make this quick. So starters. Starters. Hit starters, I'll we'll name it starters analysis. We'll do a duplicate for levers because we want to do levers as well. We'll do this one levers. And then we will do this one too. Yeah, and we don't have data for 2017, remember, because we don't have any levers there. So that is fine. And then I guess the last one we can try to do quickly is the turnover. All right.
All right, so let's see if there are any questions. In alphabetical order, so how can we show department names as per our own wish? Uh, okay, uh, so that's an interesting question. Um, I actually, we already do something similar in this uh, in this so uh, if you maybe you didn't catch it at the beginning when we show the year and month for example this is not um, uh, it's alphabetical order before but what we had to do was sort it by a month number so if you look at the uh, the dates for our calendar so I'm just gonna slow down a little bit if I'm going too fast stop me by default, columns uh, are sorted by uh, by alphabetical order. So that means uh, January won't be number one originally. But if you want to sort them, you know, uh, as your kind of like your own sorting, you can. You need to create a different table for it that has numbers which you can use for sorting. So if you're still in, if you're still watching, I can show it to you really quickly. Uh, and then um, I, I will finish up the uh, I will finish this up because I think we're pretty much done. I just wanted to show like one last bit, which is to how you can navigate through these and how you can use these. But anyway, let's do it really, really quickly, uh, right? So I can show you. For example, let's say we want to show headcount by region. You want this to be sorted based on like your own sorting so you don't want it to be sorted by you know the number of head count or by the alphabetical order and region you want to sort it for example you always want to see philippines first and then you want to see uk and then you want to see the united states right so you want to have a different table for it um which you know which has your sorting order so for example so we're gonna create just a sample data here we'll do uh, region order and then we'll do the region uh, let's see united kingdom well actually no we said we wanted to do philippines first right so philippines united kingdom and United States and let's see order one two three there are a couple of other regions but let's not do all of them um, I think this this should work uh, by itself uh, let's see uh, otherwise if it because maybe it won't show everything uh, but typically what you would have is you would create first you would need to have like a reference table like this you would load it You would go to your model view. What happened to my Power BI? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, so let's have a look. So you'd want to create a relationship between your re the, the ordering. And, th and you do this because you want to use this as your propagation your filter um, and you're able to sort it by the order so the next thing you'll need to do you'll need to go to region or maybe you need to go on the report view so you will need to do go to region you need to highlight it and then you sort it by order so what that does so if I delete this and let's bring in region and let's say you have the head count so you see it it always shows them in order. Obviously, it's, it, it shows the rest because it doesn't have any values. Um, but you'll see it always starts with Philippines, United Kingdom, and then United States, exactly as we have here in the region order. I hope that answers your question, Riaz. So, you know, it, this one, it means that irregardless of your alphabetical order, it will always... Um, you know, if you use this column, it will always sort by whatever you um, you define here in this uh, in this option. All right, so I think um, 
I think that covers everything that I wanted to cover in this video. So now you have a report, a very simple report that gets all of these values out of your, um, your, your flat Excel table. So you get your summary table here. You have different views for the uh, kind of different calculations that you have. So it gives you a lot of value um, in terms of filtering. So you, you're able to filter between specific years, um, different regions. Maybe you want to see specific regions, like how maybe how Philippines is doing in terms of headcount. And, um, and because everything works with a cross filter, it means that if you select, for example, uh, any values here, for example, full time, you will see um, how full time affects everything else. So, uh, so for example, you see um, out of 160 uh, full time employees that we have, four of them were starters and nine of them were leavers. So everything recalculates based on all of your interactions in this report. Uh, same thing with the starters and levers and turnover because they're all kind of the same. So great. Um, I guess that concludes this live stream. Uh, thank you so much guys for watching and uh, let me know if you like this uh, if you like this format. Let me just switch into the camera. Yeah, so thank you so much for watching guys. Um, what I'll do, I will um, I'll leave a link down uh, for a replay for this video. Uh, so if you want to download the Excel file, but maybe I'll also include the PBIX so you can have a look at it yourself and just dissect it a little bit or, 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 or do your own calculations. If you want, I'll leave it all in the description box below once the replay is, is out. All right, thank you so much guys for watching and happy Saturday. Bye.